So the next thing we're planting is called a medlar. A medlar is something I've never heard of before. It's similar to a persimmon. It's very, very late ripening. So like early, late fall, almost winter time. And you actually eat it when it's almost like rotten, but it sounds gross, but it apparently tastes like like a really amazing apple butter when you eat it. So it's like a soft texture. So similar to like certain types of persimmons that you would have in the um, Northeast. So I'm excited about it. I'd never heard of it before. The nursery um, that sent it to us is known for this tree. It's, it's like a rare tree that you don't see all over the place. We're gonna go ahead and get that one planted probably maybe in the garden. I'm gonna look up the planting instructions right now to see what it, what it seems to like. All of the trees that we're planting today are from a nursery called Rain Tree Nursery, which is out in Washington. And everything looked really good in the package and they have some really cool varieties. They, they excel in like more rare type varieties and, and permaculture. Uh, so it's pretty cool. And yeah, I'm excited about, I'm excited specifically about the medlar. All the animals are nice and happy today, enjoying this nice weather. The garden's happy too. Look at those happy garlic raspberries. And then I planted a bunch of stuff just the other day. You can see all the mounds where I brushed aside the wood chips. Okay, so I just did some brief research. Medlars like moist soil. They like full sun. And so we've got lots of moist soil. We've got lots of full sun. It sounds like they tolerate a lot of different soil types. So we're gonna go pick a location and we'll kind of explain our reasoning for that. I'm thinking somewhere near the garden. You can see how well Chris is doing cleaning up the garden. I mean, last time I showed you guys in a video, it was a mess. All clear of weeds. That's an artichoke that came back. And he did this, and then this is almost clear. There's just some, some weeds in here. So we're thinking we're gonna plant it right in this area because we want to add some height, some dimension to the garden. It's so flat right now. This area has been mulched for like probably close to a year now it's not that's not great I mean there's weeds coming up but it's gonna be probably easier to to work with so let's go ahead and get our whole hole dug all right okay so this is the medlar tree you can see actually it's already starting to um, wake up from dormancy so it's a good thing we're getting it planted now so it's like an Evernoff medlar we got the hole <laughs> got the tree spreading those roots I'm gonna get up. Just been lounging here in a chair. Okay, I'm gonna get up and help. <coughs> That's really loud. Can you be quiet? <laughs> medlar. Or medlar. Medlar, medlar. Who knows? Who knows? I'm sure someone knows. Yeah. Your muscles are looking extra bulk. Oh, that's good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Actually, my plan is to have all perennials down this line. So maybe we'll plant another fruit tree somewhere down the middle, actually. Okay. That's my plan is to have like, you know, the garden and then a row of like fruit trees and perennials uh -huh. and then garden. And then I have a row of some fruit trees over there. Um, I've mulberry and stuff. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days. Both of the trees that we received have been planted. The medlar, um, which is a fruit bearing tree and the chestnut tree, which we planted way over there. And now we just have to plant a couple bare root fruit shrubs and tomorrow we're gonna plant or sometime in the next few days we're gonna plant the the trees or fruit bushes that were not bare root that were in little pots of soil because they don't need to get in the ground quite as quickly okay so we got the two berry bushes Chris has got them right 
there. Yep. Got it. And we'll get them, get them planted in the ground. And so we got these guys in the water, and then the the gooseberry. It's a black velvet gooseberry. It's thorny, very thorny. And then the current is shorter and stouter. This one's a a red red current. So. Okay, so we got a whole dug, and we're gonna go ahead and plant the current. The current's a short, squatty one. We picked a nice spot pretty close to the medlar tree, just like 10 feet away. And we're gonna plant it there. Let's see. So we got a Rovada red current. Rovada red, can you show them the roots? The roots? Stuff. Yeah. So there we go. So we're gonna plant that in this little hole over here. Um, gooseberries like rich, like a medium soil. So they don't need like a real loose soil. So we, we have a nice good spot for them. guy right there okay so we're following the same approach with the gooseberry just moving down this this line we've got the meldar meldar medlar we've got the current right over there and then about 15 feet over from the current 10 feet over we are planting the gooseberry hey guys it's two days later when we planted the other trees and shrubs. And we are planting two hazelnuts, a huckleberry, and this berry called a gumi scarlet berry. So we have three hazelnuts already. And they're in this like general area where we are right now. So we put one down right over there where we're gonna plant it and the other one right over here. Um, hazelnuts are more like a shrub. They don't get real big like a tree or anything like that. They're pretty, pretty well managed, um, pretty small. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get those planted. And now we need to find a spot for the huckleberry and the gumi berry. Huckleberries like, oh my goodness. Hey, hey, I don't want your claws on me. Huckleberries prefer shaded areas. So we're going to follow the approach we used when we planted blackberries and kind of go near this, this um, tree line over here, which gets evening sun but it does get some afternoon shade although it looks a little boggy so we're just gonna have to find a spot that's what about behind the blackberries in that area where we have like the tree down and stuff that could be a nice little area right sure okay so we have our blackberries in this section right here you can see they're all um leafing out they're actually looking really good this year and so we're thinking maybe in this area which could be fun actually because a lot of this stuff in here is um, wild black cap raspberries. Like you can see this right here. So we'll mix the wild, the native with the, well with the uh, non-native. Although huckleberries I think can be native here. I was gonna say as well as the uh, wild strawberries too. Yeah, there are wild strawberries in here as well. So these are wild strawberries in here. You go all the way back here and then this is the um, black cap raspberry which are so tasty and so now we're gonna get they look prolific this year to me the, the actual plants themselves for some we reason can see them we don't have all the overgrowth of everything else yeah so then we have the huckleberry and the gumi berry which i haven't researched planting gumi berry yet but i will while while i get the whole dug for the huckleberry so let's get the huckleberry put down just go ahead and put it down right there i just google like quick instructions for each thing we plant just to get a sense of whether they like moist soil dry soil <clears throat> okay so gumi berry gumi bush is like full to half day sun well drained soil and usually begins bearing the second year after planting full to half day sun okay well this is not going to get full sun here because it's going to get shade yeah so we probably don't want to plant it over here so maybe let's look back at some of the other I love all these woods in here. We like well-drained soil. Just thinking of what we have open to us. The lighting looks so nice right now. Oh, Justin! Oh, you got stuff on your eyes. You're so cute! On a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when
when they sing and dance So Goomy Berry, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. The reason I need a minute is because I don't actually know what it is. I'm going to do a little quick sleuthing to find out. Large, sweet, and tasty fruits native to Russian Far East China and Japan. I feel like that's a good sign that it may work well here because our weather is kind of similar. Um, they form a medium sized shrub growing to six feet high. They're attracted, they have silvery green foliage, and I think some places call them the silverberry. The scarlet red fruit is speckled with silver and ripens in July. It's aromatic, reminiscent of pie cheer. It likes full to half day sun, well drained soil, and will often begin fruiting the second year after planting. So, I'm guessing that next year, right? Huh? It's hardy to minus 25 degrees. Yeah, we'll be fine. The yield is 10 to 15 pounds. You, you can plant a different type of gumi for heavier crops and cross-pollination, but it is partially self-fertile. So it will produce on its own, but it's going to do better if it has a partner. Don't we all? Don't we all. That's very true. What do you... We buried, in terms of wood chips, the tree over there last year in the cow. Okay, the first filbert, aka hazelnut, is going in the ground. McDonald filbert. Chris and I both forgot what a filbert was. <laughs> when these came and we were like, why does was, this look so familiar? I knew it was a nut, but I couldn't think of what it was. He's just breaking up the roots right now so that they know to spread. Add a filbert. Got it planted? Yeah. Did you say old McDonald had a fart? <laughs> had a filbert. Oh. Second filbert. Third plant of the day. Just the one more Webster after this. Webster Filbert. What? The Webster Filbert. Oh, it's a different kind. Yeah. I'm going to show you guys our other hazelnuts that are starting to bush out more. See this right here. American Hazelnut. I planted it last year. It was about the size of those guys that we're planting right now. Now it's about maybe two and a half feet tall. Got one more over here. This one is also an American hazelnut. Also nice and bushed out. It's got this third hazelnut done. Third, I can't count these gloves because I can't hold the fingers up. Oops. And we'll move on to the huckleberry, the last one. Numero quattro. Numero quattro. Which is good because I'm ready to go inside. I'm yeah. tired. I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> Honestly, walking around carrying this camera is making me tired. Voila! Is that it? Dunzo? They liked moist, moist soil. This is very moist. Moist, rich, acidic soil. Oh, hey, what are you doing over here? You're not a tree. It's very hard to hold roosters. You don't need to be planted. How big they are. Yeah. Where are you going? You little rascal. Um, babe, yes. this is a scientific method. Uh, yes, actually. She's just like jumping on logs and attacking branches on things. Weird little cat. Okay, there you go. Just let it be. Let it be wild. Okay, we finished our last shrub, or Chris finished our last shrub. There it is. There it is, so we did four, four today, and it took us about, what, an hour and a half? Um, okay, so we're done though. We planted all eight of the trees and shrubs that came to us from Rain Tree Nursery. So I'm gonna put all of the links to the plants that we planted today in the description below. Some of these things are really cool, like the Gumi Berry and the Huckleberry and the Medlar and Chestnut. All these things are, are new to us here at the Sunshine Farm, so we're excited to see, see how they produce. Everything looks healthy and good, so 
good to go. Good to go. If you have any questions about what we planted, why we planted it a certain way, you can post it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. But we're not experts, so our answers will not be... We'll Google it for you. <laughs> we'll Google it. We'll do our sleuthing research. Yeah. Okay, bye friends. See you next time.